The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. A bunch of questions have come in, really important questions. I'd like to deal with them, but I have a webinar coming up a week from yesterday. Uh, that is the 19th of November, 5 o'clock to 6.30, discussing, I've, I've, I keep getting asked, could you, could you spend a little time going through in a little more detail some of the techniques that you use so often? Uh, some of us haven't got your CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology. We know that you've gone all all through these things for de for over a decade here, and you've uh, refined some of them. Could you just discuss them? Well, of course, an hour and a half is not in, even close to the amount of time I used to do three days in a row uh, talking about these Chapman Wave techniques. Um, <clears throat> But I've refined it to the point where I think I can nail exactly what's pertinent for this particular phase of the market and what, technically. Look, I said to subscribers, we can't get too carried away about the downside yet, even though everything says <clears throat> that there should be a um, some kind of a pullback, a breather, I've called it. Look, the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, look, since it crossed positive right here, I always circle it just to show you exactly what's going on. The, the green line, the nine period differential fast moving average is way above the red one. To go from there to, to negative, you would have to have a very sharp, you'd have to pierce this trend line resistance of 27,310. Not a big deal, it's only 170 points, but you'd have to pierce the, I, actually I'm, I'm sure it would have to be even more. You'd have to go down below the 27,156 where the, where the um, right here, where the nine period exponential moving average is. The, um, that's a 14 period, the black moving average right there, 27,156. 27,262 is the nine period exponential moving average and it's also the trend line support. You'd have to really come down sharply and needs speed or it needs lower lows and lower highs, a series of time uh, and price matches that really slowly get the nine period differential, that's the histogram, the distance between the two moving average to decrease. And for the stochastic, which is flat and steady at 91%, to start plummeting below 80%. So that's number one. It's going to apply to all the all the other indices. Look at the weekly. The weekly has just turned positive. This could be a temporary thing, but it is good that for about three weeks now, the uh, nine period moving average is above the uh, 26, the slow moving average. It's good that the at 82 percent, not great. It's, I like to have 88 to 92 percent in the stochastic. It's at 82. That's good. And remember what I said about this V, this V shape going to a W in the unbalanced volume as a clue to say, don't get too carried away to the short side just yet, because there might have to be another um, rally towards the highs in the unbalanced volume, this blue line right here, especially with the W formation. So all in all, what we're looking at is there has to be a bad news event. I'll just do this for one second. I think this is it right here. Uh, is it? No, it's not. That's another combination that I use. Oh, boy, am I going to find that? Is it this one here? Um, no, nope, not that one either. Oh, boy, I don't want to waste time. So I'll find it. It was right here, but I, I did a couple of things that were slightly different. <laughs> no, I'm not going to find in the, in, the, in the moment that I need. So um, what I wanted to show you is a, a little clearer picture of the nine period and the 14 period moving averages. doesn't matter. What I am looking at is this second um, rally since the low that was made at 25,339 in August has this at leg B. I could call it F slash B. Just for now, I'm going to call it B. I don't see any reason why I need to have an alternate count. Everything is good. I do expect that there will be a bit of a pullback. Now, this is, to me is going to be the most important thing. We've got a time, but not a price match in the monthly chart. So this is not technical Friday, but since I won't be your Friday, I'm going to treat today and tomorrow as um, technical Friday. 
it is just so important where we are right now. We've seen that some stocks have come out with earnings and have just screamed, rocketed to the upside. Other stocks have come out with almost the same type of earnings, but the, the interpretation of the comments are different. And you would expect instead of a big rally, they have like a 15 to 20% decline. And this is the market we're in right now. If you're right, you are really right. And if you're wrong, you're really wrong. And I'm going to discuss that in a short while as well. But I want you to say that there's been an 11-month correction in time from the high of January of 2018 down 26,616 to the low of 21,712 in December of 2018. 11 months to November to October, going in to the first day of November where we actually went. Was that the first or second day of trading? Uh, we went to all-time highs. And that is exactly, if you're looking at this right here, you'll see that that matches the uh, time sequence, not the price, because the price has gone to higher highs and higher lows, except for that one smash in December. So right now, we're in the Chapman Wave inside track of the monthly chart. That makes this really important. And it makes it important because the MACD is still negative, hasn't turned positive. Wow, if this thing turns positive and expands, this market is going straight to 28,800. But until that happens, you can have a bumpy ride and a lot of choppiness sideways in taking a breather after such a big move that we've had just in the, even the past uh, five days. So the stochastic is very strong at 90%. It's surprising that it took until now for the Dow to actually break into all-time highs. Nothing wrong with this chart. I'm just saying time says that there's a little bit of a moment just to be a little bit cautious because all the goals have been met and we've finally gotten to leg D. Why do I say leg D as so important? Why? Because in Chapman methodology, from the lowest, most obvious low bar, you want to start counting higher peaks. You alphabetize them A, B, C, D, E, F, G. D, the fourth highest peak, peak is where other things can happen. We've seen how many times that has occurred. And I'm only looking at straight line down or up. Arch formations, cup formations, and a combo. Okay, now how does that fit into what we're looking at? Look at the weekly chart. Look at these cup formations, how important it is. And look at the way the technicals are different each time, and yet we've stalled just within that 27,300 to 27,500 area. Okay, so this is a very important moment. The other thing is that within the context of time, you've got an exact match. <clears throat> in the short term to this week right now that's unfolding in the weekly chart between the high of July at 27,398, the high of, I always forget to put the date in, I think it was September, yeah, September the 13th, week of the September the 13th, 27,306. And right now where we are with a high yesterday of 27,560. Okay, I like to look at the time matches because at those time matches, sometimes you can get a reverse of trend. That's all we're looking at, chances of that occurring, and we'll see what happens. This is a weekly chart. I have to wait till Friday. So the S&P, it got to a new high. But wait a minute. This is a leg B. There's no other way I can count it. Leg B in the monthly. That is really positive. Doesn't mean right this very minute it's really positive. It means in the monthly longer-term chart, because you should still have a peak B. That's a month. Then at least a leg C, that's a month at least. Then a peak C, that's another month. Then a leg D, that's another month. That takes you into J. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, we're back. Bowser Trap and Tiger it. Today's is our and the Dow is uh, down 42 and it was down sharper before it came back. Now it's down 41. It's digesting those big gains. s and is down 480. Now this is going to be important. You see, We've taken the bank D is still still flat up at the highs. The price is way above the nine period moving average. And I had a question come in to say, okay, so negative trade talks and the Chapman wave is predicting a pullback. We're still no significant pullback today. Is this telling us the market is extremely strong? So stay long. So, um, you know, I think subscribers know that my bias has been only on the long side. We have had some short positions, but they are the indexes are mostly the Dow. And I'm really quick to get out or stay in or whatever it is. I'm just treating them as trades at this particular point. One of the reasons being we only have long positions because there are so many stocks that are trying to form some kind of a base. And I'm trying to find areas that are that are holding very well after having come down sharply and look like they're ready to at least have nothing nothing more at this point than a counter trend bounce that could become something bigger, but I only want to go one step at a time. And if I'm looking at the S&P right now, key support would be, it's at 3,069. Key support is in the 3030s. Uh, just a, a plethora of bad news that comes in as it's testing the 3030s says, yeah, okay. So then you could go to maybe the 3020s or give back um, five days of gains and test the low that was made on the 31st of October at 3023. So I want to go one step at a time to say I'm waiting for the technicals to show that the deterioration in the technicals allows for an even deeper correction. So the answer is, in the very long term, I've been saying I'm anticipating that we've still got to have a major move up because the whole public, the general public has to, uh, historically it'll be the most unusual thing I think in history that we've ever seen where markets at all time highs, major, major highs that they haven't seen, uh, uh, even dreamt of, and yet nobody's even talking about the market. 
And yes, I still think this is what I call the coda phase, an elongated coda phase, like a Beethoven coda. Remember, we, I don't want to talk about that now, but along the term. So these cells that I get are shorter term. And what I've said is there's a particular way we want to play the short side right now. And I don't want to put too much money to work. I just want to do it as inexpensively with the best risk reward that I can. And at this particular point, right at the moment, I am going to start looking at shorts, but very selective shorts. So the answer is, I wouldn't get overly negative. Um, and certainly this is just, uh, we haven't even seen more than just a, a one and a half percent or so pullback, 2% from the top at this point, it can go another three or 4% to the downside. And then we've got to see a lot of people have missed out on the big rallies. A lot of people got in over the last few days because just about everywhere you looked, people were saying, uh, analysts were saying, oh, this is fantastic. Now we're going much higher. And that's why I think we're in for some kind of a breather. Okay, got that out the way. Um, let me show you something else. In the QQQ, this is the first down day. We just made an all-time high yesterday of 200.55. And the MACD stochastic are fantastic in the daily. The weekly charts are very good. And the monthly chart has crossed positive, and it's only in leg C. In the monthly chart of the QQQ, the NDX 100, where did that disappear to? One, two, three. The QQQ, I keep typing it in, but it's not coming up. Am I, have I just messed up something? Yeah, I think I have. There it is. <clears throat> All right. So in the Q, oh, I'm on the QQQ. In the, sorry, I wanted to say in the IWM, which is lagging badly, that says it's gotten to the top. You remember the rectangle formation that I said? A rectangle can last a lot longer than your patience. Have a look at this. In the IWM, the Russell 2000, from the uh, early, the February rally into the March high, we've just been stuck in a range of 160 on the upside and 143-ish on the downside. And haven't broken it yet, even now, as we're speaking, is struggling to break out. So sell-offs have been very well limited, and rallies in the IWM have been very well limited. And as soon as it breaks out into the 162, 63 area, wow, that's something completely different. So don't get too carried away, and don't get too, I would say, don't get overly negative just yet, and be very selective if you do. Number one, number one is, if you're looking at the different the commodity uh, move, well, gold is still stuck in the range. Look at the weekly chart. This weekly chart has been stuck uh, between the 1520 and the 1480-ish area. Stuck. And if you look at silver, I'm just expanding this now. Um, it's back. It's, it, it touched, in fact, the rectangle formation that I said is key support as a base level. All right, in the daily. The weekly chart shows you, actually, I'm going to move this up for now. I did, I did this before as a worst case basis. But basically, what we're looking at is that you've got just under 17 as key support and just over 18.50 as the resistance is just stuck. That's in the daily and the weekly. Um, have a look at the, um, I want you to show you the XLK. XLK is the S&P select tech sector. Gone to a leg E, pulling back a little bit. MACD stochastic are very strong, holding very nicely. Here's the daily. Oops, that's an E. Here's the daily, and it's a D in the weekly chart. And here in the weekly chart, the technicals are pretty good. Not great, but they're good. And all it's done is it's just gone to higher highs and higher lows in this beautiful up channel right here. Hasn't yet got to the resistance, which would be around about 87. It's at 84.75. Hey, wait a minute. What about the SMHs? <clears throat> SMHs gave a doji candle yesterday, 134.02 in the daily leg E slash B in the weekly. I'm watching this very closely, only leg C in the monthly. So this is saying to me there's another good reason why there could be some breather over here because even the SMHs, which has led the way up all-time highs, is starting to pull back, and it looks like it wants to digest these big gains. So I think I've done a chunk of that. I want to just show you the TLT. <clears throat> Having a bounce off the lower low that was made yesterday, which didn't take out the 136.54 low of uh, the 13th of September, 136.54, and yesterday's low was 136.73. Let me type that in so we've got apples to apples, 136.73. 
Um, and it's just bouncing a little bit, but it says to me that the bonds are stuck in a range. Hasn't bro they haven't broken to the upside, but they haven't broken to the downside. And the TLT, once it gets to 135.20 or lower, says, uh-oh, that left side H pattern, the dreaded H, I've gone under it. Now comes a really important uh, uh, price movement, up or down. All right. Now, the next thing we want to look at is... Um, <clears throat> Do you still see leg D up in TLT? Yes. The TLT, I believe, will make a new leg to the upside above 140, 148.90. At least this is the way I'm looking at it right now. I don't see why I should change that view. It goes from 143 in July of 2016 down to 111 in, um, that was, I think it was December of, uh, November of last year, screams up in August of this year, goes to 148.90, and now it's digesting again. I think, yes, the TLT is going to go to a higher high at some point, and we'll be back in a moment, because now there's a lot of other stuff that's come in. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, let's go straight to Mark at Fort Collins. Mark, how are you? Hey, Basil, how are you? I'm well, thank you. You would like to look at? AK Steel, AKS. So do you have a position? I held, I had a position in the like 220 range, and I held it through the dismal earnings um, pullback, which happened a few few days ago, and then Correct. I actually, actually got out at 274 um, yesterday, and I'm looking at a possible re-entry. Let me know what your thoughts are. 
Okay. So AK Steel uh, trading at uh, 260 down 50, one of the stocks we keep on our list uh, for my trader's corner, my opening call segment. Uh, and it went all the way to peak D, and then it pulled back because of earnings, and it dropped really sharply, hit a trend line support. I saw this. It was one of those, you know, in my newsletter, I have a segment that I call... Uh, uh, these are the stocks that are giving me certain signals that I call screamers. They are low price stocks, single digits, and they have this knack of having a single leg up, and it looks like it's impossible for them to keep going because they're going to have a pullback, and they don't, but they keep going. So this was in that kind of segment, but I saw that now for um, this particular phase, it was got to be real choppy, so I took it off the list. I'm kind of pleased in a way because it's really tough, just unless you do it the way you're doing it, you get in, you know exactly that there's a, a leg D, whatever it is, you get out, or leg E, and you just get out. But it's a little difficult when it's this choppy and a sideways trading range in the weekly to say, uh-oh, this, this is a keeper. I think this is a trader. So AKS Steel trading down 5.8% right now says to me, if it takes out, and I think it will, the 14-period moving average, the daily 14-period moving average, and closes under 258, there's a good chance that it's going to try to test the uptrend support line that held before, and that would be at about, depends where it is, because it's rising, but somewhere around $2.42. However, my weekly chart says this time, because of the move that we're seeing today after, it's almost like uh, it fell, and then people said, but wait a minute, it wasn't that bad, and then it ran up, and then they said, but maybe it is that bad. So when it goes into this phase that says, yo-yo pattern, trade it like a yo-yo pattern, exactly the way you're doing it. So here's my recommendation. The next time you get interested in it, if it actually pulls back underneath 250, 58, 256, that, that support level, it says something's a little different this time, and you've got to give it a little extra time. Then give me a call, and let's look at it together. If you see it trading um, anywhere in the 245 to 243 area, because that's the level that should hold. If at that point it pulls back and the MACD is now turned down in an M-shaped formation, because the stochastic never confirmed yesterday's rally, then I'm going to say, just leave it alone. Let's get back to it in the, in the very low two, twos, and let's see what happens. If I'm wrong, and all of a sudden tomorrow, for some reason, is trading at 268, or maybe 267, somewhere in that mid-260 area, that's going to be a little different. But at this particular point, I think this move is done and needs a little bit of time. So hold off. Those are the levels to watch. 258, 256 is support, goes under it. You just have to wait. You have to step back. And then if it goes to the 248 area, that is still going to be something that needs to be monitored because the technicals in the daily will be weakening. If the weekly technicals are still holding quite well, that's different. So I'm just saying congratulations. You did the move. You got out. I, th I think that there was good, good, good planning on your part. Maybe the one little surprise you didn't expect, but you handled it well. Have patience. I think you'll have a good. Hey, did you call me the other day on LTS? Yes, I did. And there's a buyout rumor on that. So that's kind of why it was po had popped up. Um, so. oh, okay, good. I wonder what it was because it's trading down, uh, down four cents at 256 after a spectacular move from under two to over 280. It went to 279. Fantastic move, but now it looks like it's going to have a bit of a rest. Hey, nice, nice work. I, I, I like what you're doing, and I like the fact that you're not afraid to, to get out and you're not afraid to say, hey, wait, there could be one more little pop up and then I can get my profits there. You, you've traded it very well. Keep in touch, and congratulations, Mark. Do you have time to look at one more? Sure. Um, EGLE, it's kind of in the same uh, industry as DSX, which we own, or I own still. Um, and, uh, and I'm wondering, it looks like it's in a rectangle formation, and it's tested this 421 to 423 area. Yeah, Here this one. Yeah, I looked at this a while back because this goes back even further. This is Eagle sh bulk shipping. Um, my only concern about it was the steepness of the rise in the monthly MACD. I've seen this picture before, where the MACD is rising and rising, and the price is coming down. And that's that's a a very complicated technical 
aspect. And I kind of avoided it. And one of the reasons is you see the move today. In fact, it should have stayed more in the rectangle above 436. Now it's at 423. I, I I'd avoid this particular one. There are others in the bulk shipping that are actually holding much better. So just this one, be careful. Yeah, they have earnings tomorrow, so I was just curious what your thoughts are. Oh, I I, I didn't I wouldn't know how to play this at four dollars and twenty three cents. <laughs> you know, you could treat it as an option and say, you know what, if everything's good, it could have a good percentage gain, a fifteen to twenty percent gain. But it goes after fifteen to twenty percent loss. No, this one, I tell you why I'd be careful because if it's if it's down and it goes under 42, oh, I would even say 42, it's at 42.23. If it goes underneath 40, uh, $4.23 right now, if it goes under $4 and say 16 cents, I think it's kind of done for a while. I'm, I'm, it's lost its, it's, lost its uh, impetus to the upside completely, so I'd be careful. Yeah, it was, I was looking at it because it hit um, the last two times ago when it tested 4.20, when it was 2.4 million, last time it tested it, it was 680,000, so like a quarter wow. of the volume. And then today it's testing that level with about half the last one. So it's. Um, yeah, I never looked at it that way. I, I see it. I, I saw the volume spike on the 22nd of October at 421, 2.4 million. But this one is not so obvious. Yeah, I, I still. I'd be. I'd just be a little careful. I th you, you could be 100% right, but boy, if you're 100% wrong, <laughs> this was not coming back quickly if it does break those levels. That's my thinking. Yeah, okay, good call. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, folks, I wanted to, I had a question in the Dan, if I would look at, um, gosh, if I can go back to find it. Um, I'll talk, maybe tomorrow I'll talk more about leg, why I'm saying leg D in the Dow, but it's it definitely, I, I, I'm calling it leg C in the uh, S&P in the uh, Cues, um, why I haven't got the alternate count. Well, where was that question? So in my newsletter, what I like to do, and I, I've had some good feedback from subscribers for quite some time now. I might not even have it as a trade, but I'll have it on if I can just find uh, this. So like, like today, I said, because we were handling a particular stock that we bought yesterday, because I love the way it was. Actually, I'll talk about it, because I was asked about it, and I'll do it. The stock is Cyber um, Cyber Arc, and I've um, it's an Israeli network security software company. We missed the big move up. I love the stock, and then it had a smash from 148 to 94. Believe me, that is a huge, you know, that's ooh, a one third decline. That, that's not good, but I liked it. So I'll explain what we're looking at. Then I'll talk about the screeners because I had a question about it because it's a cancer research uh, a company. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 32. Let's be tough. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What should you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average
average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. So anyway, so CyberArk, CBR, um, CYBR, uh, it's something that we missed on the way up. Uh, I think we once had it briefly, but basically missed it. And I say the next time it pulls back, if we assess it correctly, there's a good chance we will get it and it will be a, a better entry point. So we were long yesterday, and we got in at 104.35. <clears throat> And I was thinking that there was a earnings report coming out this afternoon and that if it acted very well, I'd have time for the newsletter today if we got in correctly and it, it actually ran a little bit after we got it. I'd have time today to raise the stop and then say, OK, be careful. We don't, there are too many stocks here that go down either 15 or 20 percent on bad reports or even good reports. And there are a lot of stocks that actually are going up that kind of price um, on the same kind of reports, it's really confusing. So just, I sent out something like 10 minutes before the close yesterday to say, okay, if you did get it this morning, because I found out, I thought one of my subscribers reminded me that in fact it was, yes, earnings are out, but they're in the morning, not the afternoon, after the bell. And I thought, oh my God, now overnight, what do we do? So I sent an email just before the bell um, to say, if, if you're a little nervous, you can just lighten up a little bit, just take something off because it's rallied, rallied quite nicely. It gives us a, enough room to say that's you know fairly reasonable. A 10-point uh, drop is not what you want to see, but if you're up four points, then that's kind of it means that with the stop, seven-point stop as it was on the day, um, you'd, you'd be even three points more against you. So then make the position smaller. Well, it went out late. I don't think anybody, I haven't had any emails from anyone saying they actually got and acted on that particular email because it came out like just before the bell. Uh, I hardly ever do that, but I thought, no, it's my obligation. I just found this out. It does change things. And then this morning I sent out my newsletter very early to say, okay, if you have a chance and you are nervous and are starting to pull back, you know, this is where you might want to get it. Well, it started to rally early as it opened, and, and then it gapped up, and it went from 106.58 yesterday at the close, we were in at 104.35. It gaps up. In fact, I was in the car. I had to, I was downtown. I had to run downtown early this morning, straight after I sent the newsletter out, and then got back. And then I, I see, I said, what's the current price of cyber uh, securities, uh, cyber software, uh, SYBR? Um, and it said up, it what closed and it said closed, and then it says up 10% on good earnings. I thought, phew, thank goodness. So, um, that using the Chapman Wave methodology, let me explain why I did this and why I didn't want to say, get out, get out, get out, just to say, just be careful. It depends on your, um, it depends on your risk reward factors, all that stuff. Well, 
Look, the MACD dipped negative just briefly, and then it started to rally strongly with the price. The price should actually have gone to a higher high, but it was with the price. I like that. It also um, had the stochastic, which was under 80%. Now it's at 81.71. I like that. That day was improving. You had a cup, for, a rectangle formation with a chance of breaking out. You had a potential cup formation in the weekly chart. And the monthly went all the way down below the 14 period exponential moving average. And yet the MACD was flattening out. I like that whole scenario. And that's all I could do. We don't know where it's going to go. We don't know how it happens next. So that's, we're rewarded for that. It hit 119.99 today. So from yesterday's 104 entry to 199.99, I'd say that, that that's kind of a very nice risk reward that says if we've got a bit of a cushion, now we can handle it in a different way. Now it's only up 19 and 115. Maybe we gave it four points because I didn't say take anything off. I was just so pleasantly surprised. Um, we'll deal with it. But that is what's going on in this market. You just don't know how it's going to be. There was a stock the other day that it came out. I can't remember which one it was. Everything looked great, and then the stock tanks. Well, it wasn't good enough, I guess. But so anyway, thank goodness. Now, the reason why I mentioned that, because I'm having a webinar, and these are the techniques that we use. Having a webinar uh, on the 19th of uh, Tuesday, the 19th of November, for subscribers, you can become a subscriber, and, and it's basically free because you, you, you can pay for a month. If you don't like it, just you get your money back, but you'll also get all my webinars at the same time. So it really is a good deal. That's number one. Number two is, look, MACD worked well. It held yesterday. It went under, just touched the 14-period moving average, and it closed well above it. Nice action there. Um, these are all the techniques that we, we talk about. So this is C right here. And now it's in leg D, and in leg D, the fourth highest peak, You've got to be careful. But at this particular point, we do have options on what we want to do, and that's nice. All right? And it's only a gray leg A in the in the uh, weekly. Why do I say gray? Because the MACD hasn't turned positive yet, and the stochastic's still under 20% to 16%. A lot of work to be done. So, you know, we'll see. This could, this could fill the gap, could do anything. But at least it gives us a nice cushion. Okay, that's number one. Number two is on my newsletter, I had two stocks, CENX and AGEN. And I said, both of these could be screamers. But I'm stepping aside as we try to deal with the CYBR um, situation because I had no idea if it was down 10, I'd have to spend a whole bunch of time and I didn't want to have a big loser like that. Um, uh, not a, for us, it's a big loser. It would be maybe 12% or maybe 10%. I, don't, I just don't like that. One, two percent we can handle. I don't like the bigger ones. So that's the reason why I didn't do it. But I was going to have them. And this is the reason why. Look at CENX. I had a reading yesterday. I said, hey, this could do very well. This is yesterday. So let me move this over. It was right here. It was right here yesterday. I love that. The MACD was good. Stochastic was rallying. And it came up in my screen as, as something that could really move. I love these small percentage winners. We've had quite a few of those lately. And I, if I had time, I would have said buy it, but I probably would have been stopped out because I would have said buy it just a little under the close of today. Um, so even if it closed yesterday at, uh, this is the fourth, uh, today's the sixth, so that's yesterday, right there. So yesterday closed at, I'm trying to move, I don't want to move it too much so you can see, oh, there you've seen it. So it was this bar right here. So it closed yesterday at 7.05 after hitting 7.13 and the low was 6.73. So I probably would have said, buy it a little under seven, so maybe 6.98, and I would have had a real tight stop, 10 cents. So there would have been 6.70, uh, 6.80 something stop, 83 stop, and we would have got stopped out, and then what would have happened? Oh no, it opened. It opened at 6.66. Oh, it would have been a perfect buy. It opened at 6.66, and it's trading, and it's 8.40. 16%. So I've thrown out a bunch of these every now and then. We don't always trade them, but I put them in as stocks that I'm looking at. I know some people have said, wow, I don't know how you picked those, but wow, nice. So that's been very important to me because it's part of what I like to do. That's the whole technique. So now I had a question about one of them that I had on, which is AGEN. I had spoken about this some time ago, and then it was off my radar. So I think we were there at AB, and then it, it, I said, okay, we're going to leave it alone. So yesterday, it closes right here. This is yesterday's close of 
$3.23, and the uh, low yesterday was $2.92. I'm sure I would have said, let's buy it. If we buy it, I want a little bit of a dip, and it should be underneath three. Um, I probably would have said yesterday's close, 320. I would have said something like 320 or lower. So today's low was. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one mark timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. So, okay, so I was looking at this A-G-E-N, and as I say, I was told it's uh, Agenus, oh, maybe Agenus, not Agenus, Inc., trading at $3.48, up 25 cents, up 7.74%. Right at the 200-period moving average, I was asked where do I think it can go. I think 4.01 is kind of a target, but right now it's at the monthly 50 EMA, the weekly 200-period EMA. So I don't know if it's going to continue right this very second, but that, that would be kind of a, a, an area. So I do this for my for my subscribers to my opening call. We have it. Sometimes we have them as a, we, we've got one that has done uh, pretty nicely for us, uh, BDSI. Uh, where's the BDSI? Uh, let's see, there it is. And um, in at uh, 5017, took a little off at 557. Uh, and 605, have another little position in it. So uh, in legs, peak C in the, in the daily, um, hit five, uh, 612. So 517 to 612, there's that straight line move up. So, yeah, there's some of these show up, and I use it basically using the Chapman Wave methodology, and that's just what I wanted to say. So now before uh, we do anything else, always look at peak Ds, look at the two-minute chart, the E-mini went to a peak D at 
just off the 10 and pulled back, had another A peak A, peak B, peak C, and then a huge peak D spike, and that was at 3074.88. Um, that was right at 11.46, and then plunged, and now it's trying to have rebounds. It's making the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m formation. There's the 10-minute chart, made a peak E, and then it plummeted down. So these are technical tools that we're using all the time. I show them in my newsletter, and we go through them in, in, in great detail. So I thought I'd just do a couple of things like that. I don't want to run out of time like I did yesterday. I had a clock, and when we changed the clocks back, I had one that was always a few minutes fast and that's the one i was looking at but it was not it was the exact this time so let's do a couple of other things here the xlf i just sorry i had a bunch of questions coming in i didn't get to all of them but i did cover a lot xlf this is an either an alternate count but i'm calling it f2 bar reversal ch a chance right here it's done very well could also have a little bit of a breather but the financials i said it's so important that they have a big rally independent of the market that's what they've done that's now maybe we can have a little bit of a rest. We're going to watch it closely. Our bank stock has done very nicely. I'll be back tomorrow. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and uh, Tom O'Brien and Basil Chapman.